everybody, welcome to Lockheed Martin's Zip Zap Potato Activity we're doing for the University of Kentucky's virtual E-Day event. My name is Gillian and I'm a Lockheed Martin engineer who works on airplanes and helicopters. In today's activity, we're going to learn about a specific type of engineering called electrical engineering and it affects almost everything we do that uses electricity. So first, let's learn a little bit about electricity. There are many natural examples of electricity in our daily lives. Lightning during a storm, for example, is electricity. Your video games use electricity to run, and your light bulbs use electricity when you flip the switch to turn them on. If you've ever touched a doorknob and felt a small zapping sensation, what you're actually feeling is a small electrical shock. But what actually creates electricity? Well, first we have to look at the atom. If you put any object under a microscope and zoomed in really, really far, you would see everything is made up of small building blocks called atoms, and atoms themselves are made up of three important components. First, we have neutrons, which sit right in the middle of the atom here. Protons are also in the center with the neutrons, and these protons have what we call a positive charge. So when we have these positively charged protons, we need something that's negatively charged to balance them out, and that's where the electrons come in. So these protons and electrons with their positive and negative charges balance each other out, but the electrons are only loosely connected to the atom. They travel around those outer rings instead of clumping together in the middle with the protons and neutrons. Since they are on the outer rings, they are easy to pull away from the atom and leave it without enough electrons to balance out the protons. A good example of this would be charging a balloon with static electricity. Next time you have a balloon, rub it against your shirt and see what happens. Your balloon started off perfectly balanced with protons and electrons, no positive or negative charge. But as you rub it against your shirt, some of the electrons in the balloon are pulled free and are left on your shirt. This means the balloon no longer has enough electrons to stay balanced and instead it becomes positively charged. Your shirt, on the other hand, has extra electrons now and becomes slightly negatively charged. If you let go of the balloon after rubbing it for a while, it will probably stick in place to your shirt since the positively charged balloon is attracted to your negatively charged shirt, and they will pull towards each other like magnets until they rebalance. So now that we understand what electrons are, we can understand how the electrical circuits work. Electricity is the flow of charge, so electrons coming free from their paired proton and moving through a wire creates electricity. This is what a battery helps us do. You may have noticed before that batteries have a positive and negative end. Within these batteries, there are chemical reactions going on that split the electrons away from the protons and start to send them out of the battery and along the wires connecting one end of the battery to the other. This electron flowing through the circuit via the wires is what we know as electricity. And as the electrons continue to flow through the wires, the light bulb will light up using the charge from those electrons. If we were to break this circuit, however, let's say we cut out some of the wire over on the right, now if our electrons tried to move through the system, they would get stuck. There's no connecting path for them to use. So in this case, there is no electron flow and thus no electricity, so our light bulb would turn off. And this simple circuit is what we're going to be using today, except we're going to use a potato instead of a traditional battery. So how exactly can we get a potato to act like a battery? We would see in our phones or in a remote. Well, first we need to create a positive and negative end of this potato, just like a battery has. To do that, we're going to use zinc and copper connectors, like the zinc and copper nails in this picture, and connect them with a copper wire to form a complete circuit. The copper and zinc will react with one another, and the zinc nail will try to steal electrons from the copper nail, pulling them through the acid in the potato so that the zinc end of the potato becomes negatively charged and the copper end of the potato becomes positively charged. Now you heard me mention the electrons are flowing through the acid in the potato. You can actually use any acidic fruit or liquid as a battery for this experiment. Oranges, apples, pineapples, even soda will all work as batteries. So knowing what we know now about circuits and electricity, let's run through our materials list, starting with our LED light bulb and clock we're going to use to test the system out. You can use either one of these, and I'll be using both in the experiment to show you how to set them both up. Then we have our connectors. 
Remember we need a zinc connector and a copper connector for each battery. You can use nails or you can use tabs, which are what I'll be using in the experiment. You could even use a very clean penny as your copper connector if you wanted to test that out. Next, we'll need some wire to connect our circuit, and you can either buy a spool of copper wire and cut it into your own 6 to 8 inch segments, or you can use pre-cut wires, which are what I'll use in the experiment. If you're using your own wire, you'll just wrap the end of the wire around your connector pieces to make the circuit connect. Last but not least, we need our batteries. Like I mentioned, you can use a bunch of different stuff as a battery, but for this experiment, we'll focus on potatoes. I'll also use one orange in my experiment just to show you it works. One last thing before we start. Don't forget that positive and negative ends are important. On our LED light, the slightly longer leg is positive and the shorter leg is negative. For our clock, the red wire is positive and that's pretty standard. So we'll make sure that our red wire that we connect to is also positive. And we'll always know to connect red to red. Last but not least, our copper connector is positive while our zinc connector is negative. So keep that in mind as we dive right into our experiment. So the first thing is we're gonna take two potatoes and these are gonna be our starting potato batteries. Now, like we mentioned earlier, when you use a copper tab, the copper tab represents positive and the zinc tab represents negative. So for each battery that we introduce to the system, in this case a potato, we're gonna pair together a copper positive end and a zinc negative end. So I'm gonna take these and push them into the potato. And you can see I'm not pushing it all the way in. We're leaving just enough room on the edge that you can connect the wire to. So if you're using a nail or using a tab, make sure you don't push the tabs all the way in. You wanna leave enough room to connect to. I'm going to do the same exact thing with the positive and negative end to my second potato as well. So now that each potato has a positive and a negative, I'm going to go ahead and connect these potatoes using wire. So I'll take one of my little connecting wires here with my tabs and I'll go ahead and put one tab into the positive end connector. So I'll connect to this copper tab here. And once that's in my copper tab, I already have my positive end and my wire connected. So my other end actually needs to go to the negative. So I'm gonna spin this potato around and connect to the negative tab or the zinc tab on my other potato. So now this wire has a positive and a negative end. Now that I've connected those, I can move on to connecting my clip pieces. So I'm going to take my positive clip piece and I'm going to take this end. And remember we mentioned earlier the copper is positive, so I'm going to take my positive connector piece, which is the red wire, and connect it to a positive end of my potato circuit. With my other connector, this one is going to be my negative end, so I'm going to connect it to the zinc tab on my second potato. So now both of my batteries are set up. I have a positive and negative connector on the connecting wire. This is connecting both of my potatoes together. And then I have my two connector pieces and I'm ready to test out the circuit and see if it's producing enough electricity to, for example, activate a clock. So I'm gonna take our clock and I'm gonna take the red wire end of the clock, which is the positive end, and the red wire connector of our potato, which is positive, And I'm gonna connect it by clipping on to a little bit of exposed wire right here. Now, if you're using a regular wire, you're gonna wanna wrap that wire around, but if you have a clipper like I do, you can just clip directly onto the exposed wire. Now, with the other exposed wire of our clock, the blue wire, we're gonna take our negative end and connect that, clip onto that negative end, and I'll hold the clock right here where you can see it. And right there, when I clip on, you can see that our clock activates. And if I unclip one of my wires, let's say I take off the negative end, you can see it immediately stops working because I've broken the circuit. So we know that we can at least with two potatoes activate a clock. So let's try this, two potatoes with an LED light instead. So I'm gonna detach my clock, put that away, and instead I'm gonna take an LED. So I have the little white LED here, and like I mentioned before, the long leg of the LED is the positive end, and the short leg is negative. 
So I'm going to bend this negative end off to the side to make it a little easier to see. And I'll go ahead and I'll connect the negative end, which is the zinc tab again. Clip onto that negative end of my LED. Now I can take my positive, which is again the red wire, and I'll go ahead and clip onto the positive end of the LED. And you can see that we haven't turned on this LED, so we actually don't have quite enough electricity in the system to activate the LED. So we're going to have to add some more batteries to the system if we want to light this guy up. So since we needed to add a little bit more battery power, I've gone ahead and I've disconnected all of the wires from our potatoes, but I did leave the tabs in since we're still going to need those. So we have two batteries set up and ready to go. So I'm going to set these off to the side and we'll bring in two new batteries. So again, we're going to use another potato and we're going to use an orange as our second battery, just to show that we can use other fruits and other things as batteries. So again, I'm going to take two connector tabs one copper tab to be our positive, one zinc tab to be our negative, and I'm going to go ahead and connect these to our potato just like we did before. Put one in each end, like this, and I'm going to do the same thing for our orange. I'm going to take a negative zinc, positive copper, and push these into our orange. So now we have all of our tabs set up. So if I take all four of our batteries, we can go ahead and say, if I'm going to start with the positive end up here and the negative end down here. I want to connect the positive to a negative, so we'll do that first. I'll take a connector wire, put one end of the connecting wire into the positive, so into the copper tab over here. And I'll take the other end of the connecting wire and put that into our negative end on this potato. Now to keep this battery going, we're going to go ahead and connect to the orange. So this is a positive tab here, it's a copper tab that I'm connecting to. And that means I need to connect to the negative zinc tab on the orange. So now both of these wires have a positive, positive, and both of them also have a negative. So now I'm going to take our next battery. This is a positive tab on the orange, so we'll connect to the negative tab on the potato. I'll take another connecting wire, connect to the positive here on the orange. And I'm going to connect to the negative end on the potato. So now we've got all of our batteries set up. They're all connected to one another. All of these wires have a positive and a negative end. So now we can go ahead and connect our connector clips to these last two tabs. So starting with the positive copper clip, I'm going to connect my red connecting wire so that we know this end is positive. And I'll connect this to the copper tab. So now I have my positive end ready to go. And I'll take my other connecting wire and I'm going to connect this to the negative end, which is the zinc tab on this potato. So now I have both of my ends ready to go. So we can test this on the clock first just to make sure our circuit is actually working. Since we know that two potatoes was enough to power our clock, four batteries in total should be plenty. So we'll go ahead and take our positive end, just like we did before. We'll connect that positive end to the positive wire, the red wire of the clock. And then we'll take the negative end and connect that to the negative wire of our clock. And we can see it does turn on. It's ready to go. So we know we're generating enough power to at least power the clock and our circuit is working. So I'll take the clock off, set it to the side, and I'll bring back the LED. So if you remember, we bent this short leg of the LED. So this is our negative leg and this is our positive leg of the LED. So I'll go ahead and I'll connect the negative first. So I'll take the zinc tab negative connector and plug that up. And then I'll take the positive connector, which is the red one. Make sure that's in really tight. And 
I'll connect this to the positive end of our LED. So there we can see the LED is actually lighting up. It's changing colors every now and then. We know this is working and four batteries was enough to power our LED. So that's it for our Zip Zap Potato activity. Hopefully you learned a little bit about electricity and electrical engineering. I hope you guys had a great National Engineers Week and have a great rest of your Engineers Day. At Lockheed Martin, we're on a mission. Your mission. When millions of people are counting on you, you can count on us. To build the impossible to invent the inconceivable, and solve every problem with speed and reliability. Every mission is an expedition of the greatest importance, both to you and to us.